Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna show you how I went ahead and made this geometric mosaic wood wall piece and how you can make one yourself. Surprisingly, this is a pretty inexpensive project even though it looks very intricate. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and I have a two by four piece of like plywood and I'm gonna go ahead and find the center points on it. So I'm finding the center points on both the long edges and the short edges to make sure that I can make a perfect cross on that piece of board so I can line up all of my wood pieces. Once I marked my center points, I went ahead and used a level to connect those lines. Then I go ahead and get my miter saw set up. I put it to a 45 degree angle and I do not touch it. Do not move it from this point. Then the wood that I use for this project are just wooden garden laths. They're just really scrap pieces of wood that we had laying around that were here when we moved here. So they worked perfectly for this project. They were in a pile for the longest time and I put them to good use. But you could use any kind of scrap wood that you have or otherwise you can go and buy pieces of wood for this project as well. I just wanted to use what I had. Then I went ahead and started making cuts on the wood. Remember, I use the same 45 degree angle cut every single time. So all I do is line up my garden lath as close as I can to the edge of where the saw is gonna cut and I make my first cut. Then I'm bringing it over to the board there, kind of lining up where it's gonna go and I draw a pencil line to get another cut out of that piece of wood just so it hangs over the edge enough that I have enough extra room in case you know things go wonky as I start lining up but then I can get more cuts out of one piece of wood so I don't waste as much and then I just repeat this process so I'll grab a garden lath I'll make a 45 degree cut on it line it up draw a line so I can make another cut and get two pieces out of that lath and I just keep going over and over and over until my board starts to fill up with pieces of wood to make the design As you can see here, the project is really starting to take shape with all the design elements in it. And the project is going much smoother than I thought it would in general. Um, I really just keep making cuts until I get the board as full as I can. So once I got as many pieces as I could cut to fill the board as much as I could, I went ahead and took the special walnut minwax stain to stain the backboard because in case there ends up being any gaps, I wanted there to be a cohesive color behind instead of just like a natural unstained plywood. So this next part is where I put a little bit of flair on this project, so I wanted to add some dimension. So what I did is I just eyeballed where I wanted it, I picked three boards, and then I cut them to about the same length. You'll see what I do here, that board comes back in two pieces, it's going to create some dimension. I completely winged it, but for reference what I did was I cut my first board from the center line out 11 and 3 quarters inches, then the next board from the center line out. 12 inches and then the last board from the center line out I did at 12 and a quarter inches and then it kind of creates this like gradual effect which you'll see in the finished project it's a little bit harder to see here um of almost like almost like an arrow effect um but I really love it because it adds a little bit more dimension and just makes everything a little bit more unique and intricate it's totally not necessary, but I wanted to take a risk and challenge myself a little bit to see if I can add a little bit more of a design element to it. And I really do love how it turned out. And I did that on all four quadrants of the project. Music 
So once I took that risk, I wanted to take another risk and use some thicker pieces of wood, which are just garden stakes. So they're just a little bit thicker. And I just kind of looked at the project and by eye, just kind of decided where I wanted to put them. It's the same 45 degree angle. All I did was remove my original garden lath and replace it with the thicker stake piece. Everything still fits together perfectly fine. Everything looks good and it looks cohesive. It just adds a little bit more pizzazz to the project. So here's kind of a little overview of what we're looking like. There's some thicker pieces. You can see the pieces where I cut and there's going to be two pieces that make up um, one of the sections. Um, I really do love how everything looks now. So I go ahead and get started with staining. I am going to use a variety of stains. So I have the Verithane wood stain in Ebony or Ebony, however you say it, it's black. Um, I also have the Verithane wood stain in Briar Smoke. That's a very pretty gray. And then I also picked up the Verithane wood stain in Antique White. And lastly, I use the Minwax Special Walnut Stain as well. So this is the part of the project where you can just add your own artistic flair. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. You just kind of look at it and you think of where you want the stain to be and what color you want it to be. I use Pinterest and Google images and stuff like that to see kind of what I wanted. And then I kind of just built off of that. I switched between stain colors multiple times during the process. I would go from the Minwax stain to like the black Verithane stain, then to the white, back to the gray, then I would go back to the Minwax stain. Um, and I kind of just built upon what I was thinking and what I was wanting it to be like. I didn't do it really in like one cohesive, like I knew these pieces were gonna be this color and I knew these pieces were gonna be this color. I just kind of did it by eye and just how I felt it was gonna look good. And I'm very thankful because it turned out good and it I, there was very good chance that it might not turn out well. But this is really like your own touch to the project and you just kind of stain it how you want to. One thing I will say is that the antique white stain did not cover very well over the pine laths. So I just went ahead and I used like an antique white spray paint that I have. I think it's called like heirloom white or something like that to spray it. And then it covered much better. And then it actually gave it a little bit more like dimension because it's a different kind of color element where everything else is stained. And some of the stains were lighter when they were put on, some were darker when they were put on, and then adding the paint in as well just kind of gave it a little bit more like visual interest. And here is where I enlisted the help of my hubby. Usually he kind of stays out of my DIY projects because he doesn't really want anything to do with them. But for this one, he wanted in on it because he got interested in what I was doing. So what we did is we took a level and we went ahead and clamped it onto the board along the straight line that I had already drawn. That way I am gluing the stakes along, the stakes and the laths along the straight line that I have already placed. And that helps me line everything up so it's straight and I don't get off center. I do look at it, this is a little tedious because I wanted it to turn out and at this point I was still very unsure if this project was even gonna turn out. So what I did is I would like line it up first and look at it and make sure that everything sat right. And that's very important to do with these first pieces that I'm putting in. So I put the long white first pieces in and then making sure that those came to like a perfect V sat against the level perfectly. I would glue them and then we would also brad nail them in place. So we just went one by one with the pieces and added them in very slowly but surely to make sure that they stayed in place. Now along the way we did run into a couple pieces in our last section that were not lining up right and it wasn't necessarily due to us getting off center. It's just that those lath pieces and those stake pieces one was thicker than the other one so then when you would continue the design it would kind of get off center <laughs> so what we did is we just had a little like palm sander and we sanded one edge of them down like the thicker piece we sanded one edge of the thicker piece down until it matched the piece that was parallel to it on the other side i don't know if parallel is the right word and then all the pieces continued to line up in perfect angles the rest of the way 
Then once all the pieces were glued and nailed into place, we just took a circle saw and the circle saw and I do not get along. So this was perfect for EJ to do because I do not like that thing. We do not get along. It does not work for me. It doesn't like me, but he just went ahead and cut the excess off of all four of the sides. And then I have like a nice smooth edge for the project. And this was kind of the final piece. I was still pretty nervous, so I closed my eyes and had him look at it first, but I really could not be any happier about how it turned out. I love this DIY project. If you guys like this DIY project too, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, farm life and farmhouse related, and I will see you next time.